As I mentioned in another recent video, I'm doing dry January, something I've done the past few years as a way to reset after, let's be honest, like two months of unfettered Dionysian intoxication that lasts from, okay, maybe more like three months, like from my birthday in mid-October through the new year. Uh, the liver is, after all, a highly regenerative organ, but only if every now and again you give it a minute to get its shit together. So it is that from up here in the fresh air I breathe from atop my extremely high horse, uh, it's from here that I read a recent press release proclaiming new genetic study confirms that alcohol is a direct cause of cancer. Uh, I'm so sorry to all of you hopeless drunkards out there. Unlike myself, your fate is sealed. Cheers. Okay, in line with copious amounts of research that shows that you need to get the kind of debunking stuff out of the way early if you want people to walk away only remembering the right thing, the truth, allow me to edit this headline just a little bit to be more accurate. New genetic study confirms that alcohol is a direct cause of cancer in Chinese men with a genetic variant rarely seen outside of East Asian populations. Uh, <laughs> here's a bonus fact. Uh, regardless of what this study shows or doesn't show, there is still loads of evidence from past studies that suggests alcohol is absolutely bad for you in pretty much every way. And yes, even in moderation. And yes, that does include the fact that it probably does cause cancer. Got it? Great. <laughs> Let's dive in. So this study published this month in the International Journal of Cancer is a really interesting and thorough one. Uh, researchers examined the genetic data of 150,000 Chinese people, surveyed them on their drinking habits, and then followed their medical travails for the next 11 years to see who got cancer and who didn't. Most subjects, about 60%, were women, uh, but none of that data offered any insights at all. Mostly, probably because Chinese women just don't drink that much, or at least the female subjects in this study didn't drink that much. So the results were only concerned with the remaining 60,000 men. The men, which is still a lot, by the way, <laughs> it's still a, a, a good number of subjects. The men who tended to not drink very much did have a reduced risk of developing cancer, but that's not really the interesting bit. You see, loads and loads of previous studies suggest that the more you drink, the more you risk getting cancer, but it's difficult for those studies to prove causality. Does drinking uh, directly lead to the development of cancer? Or do people who drink more alcohol also tend to have worse diets and get less exercise and smoke more? They do. Those are all associated. And all of those things have a link to cancer, causal or not. So it's tough to say. That's where we come to the reason this study was based, based in China. Uh, if you have enough East Asian friends, you might be familiar with the alcohol flush reaction. You might even have it yourself. Uh, 30 to 50% of the East Asian population and a very small percentage of other populations have this issue, uh, where consuming just a small amount of alcohol can be extremely unpleasant, resulting in red splotches on the face, neck, and shoulders, sometimes the whole body, plus nausea, headache, and an increased heart rate. The condition is due to two annoying genetic variants that a person can have. Uh, first, there, there's ALDH2, which interferes with the body's ability to break down uh, acetaldehyde, uh, a toxic compound that our body produces when we digest alcohol, and ADH1B, which makes the body turn alcohol into acetaldehyde even more quickly. So if you have ALDH2, you're probably going to have a bad time when drinking alcohol. If you also have ADH1B, you're likely to have an even worse time. Interesting side note, no one is really sure why so many Chinese, Japanese, and Korean people have these alleles, while it's pretty rare, like less than 4% in the rest of the world, with the possible exception of Southeast Asia and Inuit populations. Researchers suspect that it developed around the same time that East Asians began to cultivate rice. 
could be random, or it could have been selected for due to the same allele providing some kind of protection against certain parasites that came along with rice domestication. Evolution, sometimes it sucks. Anyway, as you might predict, this study found that men with at least one of those genetic variants were less likely to drink alcohol frequently or in great quantities. And those guys enjoyed about a 25% lower risk of developing any kind of cancer. And men with both variants enjoyed a 14% lower risk of all kinds of cancer and a 31% lower risk of developing specifically those cancers that have previously been linked to alcohol. That's cancers of the head and neck, the esophagus, the colon, the rectum, and the liver. This held true even for men who occasionally had a drink here and there. Uh, If they had those alleles, they had a lower risk of developing cancer. But a subset of the men with ALDH2 didn't let a little flushing and nausea and headache and heart palpitation stop them from really boozing it up. For those guys who had the variant and still drank frequently to excess, their risk of developing those specific alcohol-linked cancers increased significantly, even over men who drank to excess but didn't have those genetic variants. All of this, I should note, was controlled in regards to those other cancer-related lifestyle things like smoking, bad diet, weight, lack of exercise, as well as a family history of cancer. They controlled for all of that. While this study's immediate applicability is to the significant portion of East Asian people who have those genetic variants, and only to the rare person from other populations who has those variants, uh, it does go a long way toward showing how alcohol may directly cause cancer in everyone. Like, yes, things are definitely bad for drinkers who have more trouble breaking down alcohol, but there's a good chance alcohol is affecting everyone in this way just to a lesser extent. So remember kids, if drinking causes you a great amount of discomfort, that might be your body saying, hey, please stop, this is killing me in a rather long and drawn out way. And even if it doesn't really bother you to get shit-faced every night, maybe reconsider what you're putting into your body anyway. Alcohol might be fun, but it remains the second deadliest drug in America after tobacco. And that doesn't even take into consideration drunk driving and alcohol-fueled homicides, let alone cancer. If you think you might be drinking too much and are having trouble controlling it, please have an honest talk with your doctor about it. You know, they always ask. I'm pretty sure most people lie about how often they drink. Tell your doctor the truth. Uh, There's plenty of evidence-based secular ways to control addictions like that these days. There's no need to relinquish anything to imaginary higher power if you don't want to. As for me, well, in February, I will go back to having the occasional drink on the weekend. But I swear to God, if a new COVID variant shows up, I reserve the rights to consider Wednesday part of the weekend.